I'm happy to be here today in a conversation with my good friend Dr. Gary Roberts for a fireside chat for the Wild West History Association produced by Eddie Lanham. Dr. Gary Roberts, Emeritus Professor of History of Abraham Baldwin Agricultural College, consultant to the National Endowment for the Humanities, consultant to the Sand Creek Massacre Historical Site in Colorado, historical consultant to the Northern Cheyenne Tribe in Montana. Sold his first article to True West Magazine when he was a high school senior, <laughs> a lifelong habit. Contributed articles and presented papers to conferences and organizations around the country. Received numerous writing awards for articles including Death Comes for the Chief Justice, Massacre at Sand Creek, a Wyatt Earp Anthology, and the seminal biography Doc Holliday, The Life and Legend. Awarded the Wild West History Association Lifetime Achievement Award in 2019, mm -hmm. and in 2020 received with Roy Young and Casey T. Fertiller as co editors the Wild West History Association Six Shooter Award for the best book of Wild West history. Gary, you are the man. <laughs> and I'm excited to be here today to talk with you about what has brought you probably to your most fame, and that's Doc Holliday. And that sounds like <laughs> <laughs> and um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell first, before you talk about who I am, I want to tell how we met each other. Okay. I was um, just beginning research on John Henry Holiday, who became Doc Holiday, and his family for a house museum and later for a book. And I came across a little, a little book of family history in our local historical society files. And it was a little book called In Search of the Holidays by somebody named Susan Mackey Thomas of Valdosta, Georgia. And it was just packed full of family history. I'd never read about Doc Holliday, really his, his whole beginnings. And I wanted to talk with her about that, and I didn't know how to get in touch with her. So I, I um, found a phone number for the publisher, which turned out to be Susie herself, Little Rivers Press, <laughs> called, and she answered the phone in this beautiful southern accent of hers and was just so willing to share with me, invited me down to meet her. She and I became very good friends. And after a bit, she, she wrote me and said, I need you to meet someone because I've contacted this marvelous historian to help me maybe do a revision of that book, and his name is Gary Roberts. So you and I were introduced by Doc Holliday's cousin, which makes this pretty authentic here. Yes. And it's been, it's been a joy knowing Susie, the late Susie Thomas, and getting to be your friend over all these years. And now you can tell people who I am, because oh, well. I'm not as important, but they'll probably want to know who I am who's talking to you. <laughs> yes, indeed. I, well, I tell you, to, to mention Susie first, uh, uh, she was a jewel always generous and always uh, searching. She was uh, constantly at work and she, uh, but she would occasionally say, how are you coming? <laughs> and I remember one time, eventually she said to me, she says, Gary, I would like to see this thing published before you die. <laughs> or I die, she said, I, I believe it was. But anyway, uh, so we became good friends and I, I'll tell you a little more later about the, uh, you know, uh, how I contacted the Mackey family originally, but it was, uh, but um, uh, it was, uh, 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 it was really an important connection, and uh, and uh, one of the important results of it was the, my contact with you, <laughs> because uh, uh, and I was excited to, that there was somebody else interested in it. You know, I there's not all that many of us. We yeah. are a small group, but. Uh, <laughs> I really do, and uh, Victoria Wilcox is herself a jewel of, 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 of uh, great proportions. I, I, I admire her wonderfully, and uh, I've always been a little jealous of her because uh, <laughs> she writes uh, historical novels, and I write history, and sometimes I can't say what I really think because I can't prove it. You know? <laughs> and you don't have that limitation as a, as a novelist. On the other hand, I have to invent stuff. <laughs> yeah, so well, you have to do that challenge. too. But it's usually stuff that uh, is plausible and, right. and, and could fit the story. Exactly. But it, it, it's interesting that uh, you have always been one of those people who uh, uh, 
wanted to know as much as you could find about the, so that you could get the, the true story. Well, that's because what I want to write is not just what happened, but why and how it happened yeah. and how people felt about what happened. So I had to know what happened. Yeah. So the history was paramount to me. Well, they, and it shows in, in your work. Uh, that's why uh, uh, Victoria was the founder of the Holiday Dorsey Fife House in Fayetteville, a museum there in, in Fayetteville. And if you're ever in that area, you need to go there. It's fun. And, uh, and a two-time, two-time Georgia Author of the Year. Uh, uh, she was uh, uh, awarded, True West gave her the Best Historical Novelist Award. And she is a recipient of the Will Rogers Medallion for Western Storytelling. So, you know, she's got awards just uh, everywhere, and for good reason. And she's indefatigable. She travels uh, everywhere, and she's still she's still revising Doc's story. Unfortunately, you know, the challenge as you and I have talked about the challenge in writing historical novel is that once you finish the novel, the novel's done. You can't go back with the second edition, but when you write a biography as you did and you find more information, you can, you know, there's the possibility of doing another edition. Any thought of doing a second edition of Life and Legend? I have thought about it because I have, it is amazing to me how things happen. The day that I received the finished novel <laughs> in, the, in, the, in the mail from the publisher, I also had a, an email uh, from Bob Cash in, in Texas, a researcher in, out in Texas, telling me about he, he had discovered a, uh, a document that uh, John Henry Holliday signed uh, calling, asking the rangers to, uh, to, to uh, make safe a certain area from the Comanches. So it was a, 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 a petition and he was on there. And he was on. He was one of the signatories. And so it's huge and wasn't in the book. <laughs> it wasn't in the book. Well, we're going to talk today about some of the things that we learned along the way. Yeah. And especially Doc Holliday's interesting side trip to Montana that we knew nothing about at the time either one of our books came out. Nothing. So challenging thing for both of us is that the history is always being unfolded. Nobody knows everything. And if anybody tells you they do, they're stupid or lying. Well, that's why I, 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 I dislike the word definitive uh, when uh, applied to a work of history or, or, or a biography because seminal is a bit much better word. Right. Uh, uh, but it, it's... Uh, uh, and uh, I appreciate the acknowledgement of that or... I'm not sure it's uh, deserved, but anyway, uh, <laughs> the, uh, uh, it, it, it's really interesting to uh, to find all sorts of new things, and uh, it continues. I, there are certain sections of the book that I would seriously like to rewrite, you know, just about entirely, and some of it is not the basis of uh, it's not the basis of n new discoveries. But of uh, uh, extended analysis based on uh, the things that are coming to light. Well, and that's something that was so f fun to me about our collaboration, I guess you could say, because you were writing your his your biography, and I was writing my historical novels. And I actually at first thought maybe I'd write a biography before I met you, and so I didn't know you were. I don't. Well, I don't even think you were started on your yet. You were still, you know, talking with Susie. Um, uh, but I thought I could I could write one or the other because I like both. If I wrote a biography, historians would read it. If I wrote a novel, people going to the beach would read it. And that was kind of, I wanted to write the sequel to Gone with the Wind, which is how I got into this. And I want to talk about how you got into yours, too. Um, I first came to this because I discovered this beautiful house in Fayette County, Georgia, that needed to be saved. And it turned into my project, the Holiday Dorsey Five House Museum. And what was neat about that historically for Georgia is that it had connections to both Doc Holliday, it was his uncle's home, and to Gone with the Wind, because Margaret Mitchell had mentioned this place in Gone with the Wind. It was, it was a, a boarding school for a while, and she talked about it 
Scarlett O'Hara went to that school. And then I found out that Doc Holliday was actually related by marriage to Margaret Mitchell, who wrote Gone with the Wind, and I was just amazed. I thought, you've got the South's greatest novel is literally connected to the West's greatest Southern character. And so I thought, somebody has to write about that. And I remember sitting at my kitchen table with my husband saying, how shall I write about that biography novel? I thought, well, because of the connection to Gone with the Wind, I need to write a historical novel that can sit on the shelf next to Gone with the Wind. His, Doc's family, they were the real people behind the characters in that book. And so I wanted those to go along. So that was my introduction into this story. So I kind of came at Doc's story from a much different direction. I came into it from his Georgia relatives and his relationship to this Southern novel. And then I followed him west. Your first introduction to Doc, I think, came when you were watching 1950s TV shows? Absolutely. <laughs> I, I suspect that Doc Holliday, in, by uh, the performance of one actor or another, appeared on virtually every Western that was, uh, uh, and there were a lot of them. At one time there was like 32 Westerns a week running on, on uh, ABC, NBC, and CBS. So uh, uh, it, it was, uh, but I had, all, I was always a kind of a Cowboys and Indians kid, you know. I grew up in the, and I was in the Boy Scouts and got interested in it. Uh, uh, Indian lore and that sort of thing there, but there was also this fascination with the West. And, uh, a, and a, a grandmother who encouraged my interest in history. Uh, but uh, she uh, uh, was always one telling me, uh, she made me watch the news every day. You know, for her. It, yeah, and, 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 and she told me stories and she had letters and stuff. and. So we had a great uh, time. So she was my first uh, historical mentor, I guess you would say. But I, I got interested in, then I got interested in Wyatt Earp, obviously because of the long-running TV series, The Life and Legend of Wyatt Earp. And, uh, Hence the name of your book, The Life and Legend. <laughs> yes. Uh, and uh, it, it, it was uh, it kind of... Uh, I read a, a variety of things, and one of, I, I ran across uh, in the local library. There wasn't a lot on the old west in the in, in the our old, local in, in library. the south in and, Tifton, Georgia. Well, you didn't yeah, grow up in Tifton. Yeah, you I actually was, grew up yeah, there. I, I was in Tifton. Yes. I, what was the name of the little town? Um, um, Omega. Omega. Where, that's where I was born. Okay, Omega. Omega. I just like the pronunciation of that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. yeah, we don't pronounce it the Greek way. I don't think. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, it's uh, but uh, I, I read, I found Walter Noble Burns' tombstone, and and Burns, for all of his failings, had a had a gift with descriptions. His his uh, description of Wyatt Earp is is classic, and his very and, and his description of John Ringo or or Doc, they all I mean, they all resonate, you know. And he really didn't know a lot about Doc beyond the tombstone because of a uh, period. Uh, he didn't say a lot of, about his later, I mean, what happened after after tombstone. But uh, I was doing, so I started doing research. I wrote everybody that, uh, that I could uh, think of. Uh, and in those days, it wasn't on email, it was letters. So I wrote letters to some of the the leading authorities in the in the country and uh, and surprisingly they wrote me back and so i began uh, uh, that interchange went on for a period of years and i then i developed i, I acquired some material from the uh, national archives that led to my first article was why it really a deputy united states marshal uh which was published in 1961 uh but in the process of, of all that, uh, I began to realize that I was 40 miles away from the birthplace of Doc Holliday, or, or not the birthplace, the place where he really uh, is growing grew up, up so to speak. In and, Valdosta. In Valdosta, Georgia. So 
I made a little a trip down there. I was really young and naive, and uh, I was, I, I had hoped to meet Miss Lillian Mackey, but she had passed away. So instead I met Miss Alva Mackey. Ah. And Alva was of a different cut than Miss Lillian, from what I can understand. She was a, a much tougher, you know, and so, but I, I arranged to have a conversation with her in her home. And uh, it was, I was so intimidated. I didn't take a note. <laughs> I didn't ask many questions. I just listened and said, yes, ma'am, yes, ma'am. <laughs> and you know, she, she had that, that uh, peculiar Southern accent that's not much around anymore. No, I, I, call, it, I call it an elegant Southern accent. Yeah, it's, it's, it, 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 is, it, it was an, uh, more of an aristocratic yeah. uh, uh, kind of a... Of a of the, Very genteel Southern Yeah, accent. genteel kind of... Yes. But she was also stern, and, uh, and she told me that the family didn't really like uh, uh, the way that Doc had been portrayed. And, uh, well, let's remember who these Mackeys were. This was Doc's this, mother's family yes. who had moved down to Valdosta along with Henry Holliday. Henry yes. Holliday moved his family from, George, from Griffin, during the war, down the Civil War, um, down to Valdosta, just to refugee down to this little refugee camp that was called Valdosta, and the Mackeys were his wife's relatives, and so they also moved down. But the Mackeys stayed there, so you've got this long history, and their streets named after them. Quite a prominent family in yes, Valdosta. Indeed. Okay. And uh, and uh, Doc's mother was uh, Mackey, and mm -hmm. she uh, uh, is is. A, a fascinating person. I still things I would like to know more about her. But anyway, I had this visit with uh, Alva and uh, Miss Alva, I always called her. And then later, I also talked with an old newspaper man that had been, he was an uh, elderly man, and he, but he'd worked for the Valdosta newspaper for years. And among the people that he had known was a, a, a man named Zan Griffin. And he knew Zan. He knew Zan. Okay, and, and Zan, of course, was the young boy who went west to New Orleans with Henry Holliday, Doc's father, when he went to a reunion of Mexican war veterans. While Doc is out west, he's in Colorado, and his father goes to New Orleans. And so Zan had a story to tell. And we're skipping way ahead, but, you know, we'll go, out, we'll go there now. Well, so, so so he knew Zan. He knew Zan. Well, and okay. he had what what was frustrated me was is he had seen things that Zan had like a saddle, like a saddle. Wow. That uh, and some and some papers and other things. You know, the, this whole idea that Doc had very few friends. I don't believe. Well, and uh, we're gonna, we're going to go through all of that. Yes. I want to try to do that chronologically for yeah. folks. <laughs> so let's but, hold on to Zan. So you got to meet some of the real people that yeah. were are not around anymore, and you were saying that they didn't like the way he'd been portrayed because right. they knew a different John Henry yeah. than the movies had made. Zan about to became be. a, a fairly prominent uh, businessman at one point. He uh, in Valdos, he ran the Griffith Stables mm -hmm. down there, and he was uh, also. Uh, uh, they said he dressed impeccably, and uh, he was... He was pretty handsome. I saw a picture a, of him. And, uh, he, uh, uh, but the, the disaster came when the hotel in which Zan lived mm -hmm. burned, along with all the memorabilia and the, and the saddle. And so what you were able to do, because you could get there and talk to these people who still had the memories of things, the things maybe were gone that related to Doc, and we'll talk later about how that relates to Doc himself, mm -hmm. but because you came along when you did with this interest in the Wild West and realizing you were so close to where Doc Holliday came from, you as a young person started going to ask the questions yeah. and have been able to preserve and explore and expand on his history. Nobody else could have done that. It needed to be somebody who was here, somebody who could find the family, so it really was a wonderful um, confluence of, of person and place and time. And something that I appreciated in working with you when I was writing is that 
I could call you and say, Gary, I just found this little bit of information. What do you think this means? And then you do the same thing. Hey, we came across this article, and I'm, what do you think this means? And so we had this great opportunity. I mean, was there anybody else who could even talk with us about those things? Yeah. I, I don't think so. Not, not, not many. <laughs> not were, many. And, and so here we were in this close area researching the same sorts of things, and I think it's been a, a blessing to both of our work that we've been able to pursue that. Susie um, was a big help, and uh, gradually, but you know, uh, we were able to get in touch with other members of right. the Holiday and Mackey families eventually that way. Mm -hmm. uh, so it was a, it it was a, the start, and I never quite lost uh, uh, interest in the subject. I let it. I I got involved in other things, my teaching career, and. Uh, and uh, some other uh, writing interests, and uh, finally got uh, frustrated with the whole wider uh, field because of the uh, of some of the controversies that arose. And I said, I'm not going to. I think I'll just not do this anymore. And uh, that didn't last forever, but uh, it uh, kept me looking at other things.